draft. Now, Pete Thompson, we saw the draft in Philadelphia last year. Wasn't that this a cool year, setting? It's going to Dallas. No way Dallas can beat Philadelphia. Come no on, way. Not in draft, not in Super Bowls, and not in experience. <laughs> Trey Wing goes with us now. He can discuss his experience in the draft in Philadelphia and talk more about the draft. And also, uh, he's here with uh, Cherry Bundy Tart Cherry Juice, which, Wingo, I think – that must be what Howie Roseman was drinking when he made that trade a couple of years ago to go get Carson Wentz. <laughs> well, it would help. There's no question about that, guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, Cherry Bundy is great. Tart Cherry Juice is available at ShopRite and Lions Food Stores, I think, uh, in the area. and Or Giant Foods, excuse me. Uh, and it's, uh, it's delicious. It helps you with your sleep. It helps your immune system. And also over 100 NFL and college uh, football teams help it to work uh, recovery from workouts. But I will say this. But Philadelphia has set the bar pretty high for a draft. I had more fun those last three nights last year in, uh, in, in Philadelphia doing that on the steps of the art museum. It was, it was amazing. When we were – you guys were making the third-round pick. There were 100,000 people there Friday night singing Fly Eagles Fly at the top of their lungs. It was pretty damn great. And you're right. They, Dallas has a very high bar to reach. Yeah, and, uh, you know, one thing that was unique, you know, was outdoors. It was, you know, it was just a completely different atmosphere than years past. And uh, I would assume uh, that the Dallas, you know, uh, contingency is going to try to one-up the, the, the Philadelphia contingency. But you'll have to let us know whether or not truly they beat Philly. Well, it, you're right. It's going to be different this year because it's in a stadium. And, you know, when the, the thing that was Philly was so great, it was just right downtown. And people could walk in and walk right. out. And it was – it look – the only other thing I will say is that none of us would have uh, passed a drug test after the draft. <laughs> that, that was coming in pretty strong from the parking lot. I mean, we were very hungry Friday night at about 1130. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's interesting to talk to you, Trey, about this draft process because, as you said, it is a process not just for the teams but for you guys. So what do you do? I mean, you're hosting a morning show now. You're hosting the NFL Live. and You're getting ready for the draft. I mean, what do you do to prepare uh, for this, you know, event which has now become? Yeah, look, that's a great question. I mean, people are like, how much tape do you watch? I'm like, well, I don't really watch a lot of tape because if you're asking – if you're asking – me or Lewis Riddick to break down tape, you should probably listen to Lou. You know, you should listen to Mel and Todd or Kirk Herbstreit. Uh, my job is to sort of fill in the gaps and make sure these things, this thing stays on track. And, uh, look, it's such a fun process. And for me, I, I think people look at the draft and they see a product. They see, okay, this thing is going to come in here and help my team do well by putting him in there like a plug-and-play, you know, adapter from an Apple store. Well, these are all – 19, 21, 22, 23-year-old kids. And I think sometimes that gets lost in the process. Um, and they're human beings that are – I mean, they won the genetic lottery. There's no question about that, right? They all have Adonis DNA. But they're still far from being fully formed as a, as a human being. And I think sometimes we forget. Like, put yourself in the shoes of being a 22, 23-year-old quarterback who every single nuance and every single thing you've ever done in your life – is dissected and sliced and looked at under a microscope. That's that's a challenging picture. Uh, and I, I my one of the things I want to sort of present to people is that these are not products. These are kids. These are human beings that are going to embark on a rather arduous journey, and 50% of them will make it and 50% of them won't. Trey Wingo with us. Trey, uh, Mike's a radio guy through and through, a little bit of TV in his background. I'm more a TV guy first, radio guy second. So I want to ask you what some of the trickier parts of the broadcast are because you're doing live TV. That can't be very scripted. There's no uh, stay classy San Diego coming in the teleprompter, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's none of that. You're right. I mean, that's what I love about the draft, though. I mean, you know, if anybody's been around reality television, you know that there's really no reality in reality television. It's all... You know, there's cameras everywhere. You can't ignore the fact that there are eight cameras following you. If you are, God bless you. You're the most obtuse person I've ever met in my life. There is no script. There is no teleprompter. There is no rundown. There is no outline. I mean, think about how much money, guys, you could have made two years ago if you went down to Vegas and said, hey, I want to bet $100,000 that in the first 10 picks, one of the guys that as soon as he's picked, a video is going to surface of him smoking weed in a gas mask ball. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened to Laramie Tunsil, okay? What, what are the odds of that prop bet being fulfilled? You would have retired a very wealthy person off one bet. So none of us know what to expect, and that's what makes it so entertaining. None of us know what to expect. You know, those first two rounds, they could take so long, three hours long. I mean, you're almost like an NASCAR driver. you got to be in that seat for a long time. Uh, I'm sure people ask you, uh, when do you have time to go to the bathroom? 
Well, you're right, and, and that's where Mel is a living legend because Mel never takes a bathroom break, not even on day three when we're out there for seven hours. So we all wow. rave at Mel's big brain and his capacity to learn. i just envious of Mel's bladder. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you know, being that long, do, you know, you do a lot of, you, you know, you're doing the radio for four hours every morning now, but as yeah. you said, you get breaks, you get to yeah. go up and down. Is that four-hour radio show a lot different than doing, you know, the first two rounds of the draft? It is. I mean, they're completely different things. They're both fun in so many ways. Uh, but one of the things that makes the draft so much fun is the, is the decision that the NFL has made to make it an outdoor event. I mean, I, was, I remember sitting down with Roger. We always do a pre-taped interview right before, uh, right before the round one. And, you know, we did it in Chicago, and we sat down in, in Philadelphia, and he looked at me and said, Commissioner Roger Goodell, by the way, uh, and he looked at me and said, Trey, I think we've outgrown the idea of this being an indoor event ever again. So it was outside of the streets of Philadelphia. This time it's you know, at, at AT&T Stadium. Uh, and I think that's going to be the continuing, the, the continuing theme here because you can have so many other ancillary things to get people to go in there, draft experiences, if you will, that are going to be part of it. I mean, it used to be held in Radio City Music Hall or Madison Square Garden right. or, or a theater in Chicago, and that was great. But at best, we're talking about ten to 12,000 people can get in there. We're talking hundreds of thousands. We had over 250,000 over the three days in Philadelphia, and Dallas is claiming that they'll get to 270. Wow. We'll see, but that's sort, of, that's sort of the standard that Philadelphia has set. And by the way, for this run that every team in Philadelphia has been on outside of the Flyers losing to the Penguins in the NHL, it all started with the Super Bowl win by the Eagles, which, by the way, really started with the draft in Philadelphia. <laughs> so Philadelphia has been on this a wonderful run since the draft was there last spring. Trey Wingo is with us. And, you know, let me ask you, as, as you know, you hosted it. Were you a little disappointed that it wasn't going back to Philly? Honestly, there was a part of me that, that was. I mean, it went to Chicago two straight years, and I thought Philly more than deserved it. But now what you've got is you've got cities competing and vying for the draft. I mean, you know, there were when we were in Chicago, they had – Ten, I think, cities came and looked at the possibility of that maybe playing itself out in a different city. And then when we were in Philadelphia, I think 20 of the 32 teams were represented there. So I, I think I would have been thrilled to go back to Philadelphia one more time with the way it all played out. But I think they're going to take this traveling roadshow going forward, going to be a lot of different places. And oh, uh, yeah. it was certainly all set in motion by what we saw from Philadelphia last year. Yeah, I want to get your opinion. Uh, I think it was Richie Eisen the other day who mentioned that Twitter, you know, people tweeting out the picks right. could, in fact, hurt the broadcast. That, that you know, if they keep doing that, that, that now they're expanding the TV. I mean, obviously ESPN has had it uh, since the beginning. You can get it on a couple of other outlets. But do you agree that the Twitter aspect of it could hurt the television product? I don't know. I mean, look, there's nothing we can do about it. So I, I don't know why it's even a thought process. I mean, you know, I, look, it, it, for example, we just did last Thursday night, we did the schedule release show. It was two hours, eight to 10 on ESPN with the NFL schedule came out. We came on the air and I said, welcome to the schedule release show, otherwise known as the thing you've been speaking on about Twitter for the last four <laughs> hours. You know, this stuff was leaked out. There. There's just no way around it. So, I mean, you, you can scream all you want at it, but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Uh, you know, look, I think – ESPN and NFL Network reporters have agreed that they will not tweet out picks before they're taken, but that doesn't mean every single reporter for every team won't, uh, you know, and every single you know local affiliate, whether it's in Philadelphia or New York or Dallas, they're going to do it. I mean, you can get mad at it if you want, but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Uh, there's, nothing that we, there's nothing we can do about that. I have no idea whether it's going to affect it to me. I just think it makes it more of a spectacle. I mean, all it does is add more fuel to the fire, for crying out loud. I mean, the draft is now literally everywhere. It's going to be dominated. Uh, on so many different things. I mean, we're we're expanding our thing. Not only are we doing the draft on ESPN, but we're taking the College Game Day crew, and oh, they're cool. doing it on ESPN2 as well from a c collegiate perspective. So you're getting the breakdown of the transition to the NFL on ESPN, and you're getting Reese and, and, and uh, all the other guys from the College Game Day crew and Lee Corso and everybody, they're going to break it down from the collegiate experience. If not, it's just adding to the fuel that is the draft fire right now, and I think that's awesome. So uh, this is going to be a wild draft, Trey. I know you're talking to everybody, getting ready, prepared, as you mentioned here. Uh, we got a lot of quarterbacks. we got a lot of craziness. It sounds like it could happen. This could be uh, a very interesting draft. They all seem to be, but that number two pick by the Giants really seems like uh, it holds a lot of cards, and maybe even Cleveland at number one. This one should be a wild Thursday night. 
Yeah, it should be. The Giants can control a lot of things, or they can open up the floodgates. If they're willing to trade that pick, I'm curious to see how many teams might step up and say, hey, we want that pick because we want to take a quarterback. And that could upset a lot of draft boards. Ray, so uh, let's uh, say this. Where do you tune in for the draft coverage? Where can folks tune in while they're drinking their Cherubundi tart cherry juice and find that NFL draft coverage? Oh, absolutely. Start 6 o'clock Thursday night on ESPN. We're riding this thing to the finish. We're seeing it through until the last pick, Mr. Irrelevant, is taken uh, Saturday afternoon. Very good. And, of course, uh, Trey Wingo, you can hear him every weekday morning, 6 Not to irrelevant. Not with, even in the least. Uh, Mike Golick, uh, the new uh, Golick and Wingo show here on 97.3 ESPN. Trey Wingo, everybody, thank you so much, Trey. You got it, guys. Take care.